Hello and welcome to episode number 300 and I believe 19 of the TW 28 Arms run. We are here. Christmas has now been and gone. I hope you enjoyed the, you know, rather wacky <laughs> Christmas specials. It's just like that one time, well probably more than once a year. Because I'll probably do something more for Halloween again next year and shit like that. And Valentine's Day and all the other holidays. But Christmas is the main one where I like sort of like don't take things too seriously. But the problem came for Smackdown is that that was their go-home show for this pay-per-view high voltage. <laughs> but yeah it's, Christmas is over, we're now back to our regularly scheduled challenge run, the third you know, this series has been going on for so long that um, this pay-per-view that doesn't exist in real life that I completely made up, has now had three versions, and like each one has had something really important happen like the first one here had EO winning the Raw title, Randy winning the WWE title, then last year we had you know, fucking, the first match between the big blow-off between Breeze and Woods Balor vs. Edge, you know. This is slowly becoming a completely made up. Oh, and of course, Rhea and Charlotte in the Steel K, Steel Cell, and NSL. This is completely becoming one of my most anticipated events of the year, every year. And it's like not even a real pay per view. But tonight, of course, we have Dog Collar, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, WWE Championship on the line. We also have a triple threat match for the SmackDown Women's title. Bailey, the one half of the new SmackDown, not SmackDown. Just women's tag team champions. If you didn't watch the Christmas show. <laughs> um, against um, Asuka, both challenging Kyrie Sane. Warden versus Cesaro, that freeway ladder match for the SmackDown tag titles. And a whole lot of multi-man tags. This is like an AEW pay-per-view in that regard, I guess. Without any more further ado, let's jump into the final premium live event of any kind, of any brand, of 2022. That's how you know the card is stacked, you see. You've got... An 83 rated kickoff match. Candace and Dakota, you know, sort of the lower end of the damage control feuds because they've been feuding with about a million people. You know, obviously, Kyrie and Asuka, um, AJ, who hasn't been around recently, and Candace as well. They've sort of left Shotzi and Utami, I guess, now. But Candace gets the win over one half of the new women's tag team champions. She pins her with the Heartbreaker in 1148. 81 for Dakota Kai, 77 for Candice, and yeah, 83 rated pre-show match, probably, a, hopefully a good, um, sign of things to come tonight, but who knows for sure. Thank got our opening video package, going over some of the biggest matches of the night, of course, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dog Collar main event, the triple threat women's title match I just mentioned earlier on, Cesaro and Warden, the US title match, and then Carmelo Hayes versus AJ Styles, one on one. And said United States Championship match will be kicking off the night with an 87. <laughs> I'll take that, definitely. You know, this been a very respectful build-up ever since Cesaro won the right to challenge Warden for the belt here. They're both handsome men. They both wear suits. They fought... Who did they fight? Gulak and Oni, I believe. In a tag match, they had a respectable sit-down interview with Pat McAfee. They're just two baby faces going at it and hitting each other hard for the right to call themselves champion. Cesaro saying he didn't really get the hype for Warden until he saw him up close. But he's going to get the hype after night even more because in 1356, big power bomb. And Cesaro becomes victim number seven of Warden's United States Championship reign. Warden gets a 79 and 90 for Cesaro. And yeah, bang a match to. I, there was a lot of matches I wanted to put at the start. It was between this. The Cruiserweight Trio Championship match and the obviously the ladder match because it's a ladder match. If I went with this, I just thought that would be different, you know? And yeah, it was pretty good. Then after the match, it's just a segment. Cesaro gets to his feet, looks at Warden. They both grin at each other and they shake hands like respectable men because they are still both baby faces at the end of the day. <laughs> we then cut backstage to Kayla who's with all of damage control. And they're obviously in a jovial mood. Even Dakota, who just lost to Candice. And Kayla's, Kayla's like, how are you feeling? Are you all hold gold? You know, Bailey and Dakota, tag team champions, Cora, Liberty champion. She goes, ding dong, Kayla. Obviously, we're over the moon. Like, yes, okay, so little Candice may have, you know, just beaten Dakota on that kickoff show. But obviously, it doesn't really matter, okay? We'll give Candice that because, you know, she's not really going to win anything else important because... She's Candice at the end of the day. She doesn't do stuff like that. But it's not, it's not about Candice or even Dakota or Cora to a lesser extent. Sorry, girls. Tonight's about me and how I will become Bailey Dostraps tonight. 
I won this, me and Dakota, tag team champions. No one's taking these belts from us ever. And soon to be two double champion, Bailey, because Carvey and Asuka are both big dumb idiots and they're not going to see it coming. And tonight is my night, Kayla. I know that really stings for you because you don't really like us, do you? 70, I knew, yeah, I knew this wasn't going to do great because of what I had to do for the finish. But it is the Revolution Trio. Buster Gates, Nebo Barnes, and Rufus Hamilton, who apparently I haven't got a stable set up for yet because it just says Buster Gates, Nebo Barnes, and Rufus Hamilton versus the Bloodlines, Jimmy J and Jacob. And, yeah, obviously they debuted as, I guess, temporary allies of Seth Rollins in War Games. And they lost because Cody pinned Seth in that match. But, you know, this is all still proving between them. They've still got bad business with the bloodline. Jacob Fatu and the Usos, they obviously great trio in their own right. But for the emphatic finish, Big Nebo pins Jacob Fatu in 1331. And yes, that is two wins, two or two pins that Jacob Fatu has taken in like three days. But relax, trust, trust me. Um, he, he took both those pins for a reason, it's fine. 54 for Rufus, 59 for Nebo, 72 for Buster, 72 for Jay, 74 for Jimmy, and actually with the highest rating, Jacob Fatu with 79. But yes, an emphatic win over three of the top guys on SmackDown, and Nebo pinning Jacob really cements, I think, the revolution as a threat on SmackDown going forward. So, yeah, win-win, and obviously I had to keep these three strong, which is why the rating got pinged 76 um fine sure actually uh, in terms of averages actually balances out perfectly because Cora got a 72 and Mackie got an 80 so but obviously Cora is going to beat Mackie here I'm not taking the belt off her imagine <laughs> you know taking the belt off Cora like here after that promo from Bailey before she even has the chance to win her second title Cora just loses the belt now she wins, obviously. 10-52, double hook DDT to make defense number two of the Liberty title. She gets a 72-80 for Mackie. And yeah, we move on with Cora, still Liberty champion. Here's a segment backstage. Um, why did this do so bad? Huh, okay. Jacob Fatu is pissed off. So he's again, he's tearing shit up. He lost to Brian on Friday, he lost tonight. And he goes, Oos, Oos, calm down, Oos. It ain't that big a deal, you know. The tribal chief, he, of course, he wanted us to win that match. And we'll get him next time, Oos. Just relax, relax, Oos. And Jacob Fatu, he's obviously still steaming. He goes, it may be all right for you. But tonight, it's about me. And I lost again. I lost to Brian. I lost to Nebo. I feel like I'm letting the bloodline down. And he goes, no, Oos, no, Oos, you're not letting the bloodline down, so you're, you're the big Oos. You're the big heavy. You know, we wouldn't be where we are without you, Oos, but tonight it's about the tribal chief. And Jacob Fatu goes, yeah, we've got to be on standby for the main event tonight. And Jamie's like, whoa, 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 Oos. The tribal chief, he wants to go this alone, you know. This is between him and Seth, they could be tied together, you know. This isn't really time for, for outside interference, and he will be about to move, prove that the better man can win. And then Jacob's like, well, if I know Solo... And I do know Solo, you know, he's our family, that traitor. He's going to try and get involved on Seth's behalf, so we need to be have someone on on our back, so that the tribal chief's not outnumbered. And then Jimmy and Jay sort of look at each other all awkwardly, and then look back at Jacob and like, Oos, Oos, that's our baby brother. Oh, we don't want to put our hands on Solo. I mean, sure, he's, he's, he's betraying the bloodline right now, but that's still our baby brother at the end of the day, Oos. It ain't just that easy for us just to take him out. And then Jacob just scoffs and he goes, It is for me. And then he storms out of the locker room. 92! <laughs> uh, the triple threat ladder match. Um, the Cyclone versus the Limit Breakers and DIY the Champions, of course. Um, yeah, it goes for 1636. It's your average ladder match. With Bronson Reed, I imagine we'll do a big tsunami on somebody. Probably not Keith Lee again. But, yeah. <laughs> but, obviously, I want that spot of him doing the tsunami. Ricochet would do his thing. Gargano and Champa would do their things. And 
in the end, Gargano's on, on, on top of the ladder with Bronson Reed. And Gargano gets tossed off the ladder. He falls to the floor, allowing Ricochet and Bronson Reed to pull the championships down and crown new SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Cyclone, back together for only a few months, but already, once again, Tag Team Champions. 75 for Chamba, 91 for Gargano, 94 for Ricochet, 89 for Bronson Reed, 76 for Bron Breaker, and 82 for Keith. And yeah, this is all baby, this is a whole entire babyface match, you know, six babyfaces just doing flippy stuff. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this, I'm like, there's not really anybody that wouldn't do anything cool, because, you know, oh, he's a heel, he can't do cool dives and shit. Now they can all just give it their all. Then after the match, Gargano gets to his feet, Chamba's in the ring, he helps Gargano up. And Bronson Reed and Ricochet, they shake hands with DIY, and they leave the ring and sort of let DIY take in the cheers after they've lost their titles. Gargano and Champa sort of hug each other. And Gargano exhausted up against Champa's shoulder. Champa sort of just pats him on the back. And then he orders, he goes, oh, come on, let's, let's go, Johnny. Champa leaves the ring, and Gargano, he takes in the last bit of applause where he sits on the apron. And then Champa comes and sits next to his best friend. And they sort of again take in the cheers before they walk to the back. But what else were you expecting? 90? <laughs> yep, banger. I'm so glad this did well. Um, AJ and Carmelo. Uh, I know, I know, I know. AJ's losing again, but it's fine. Trust. <laughs> um, yeah, Melo beats him in 1856. To chalk up, I believe, is it the ninth? Eighth or ninth former world champion that he's beat? It's Keith Lee, Edge, Ziggler, uh, Seth, Oni, Kofi, Big E. AJ and I think some oh Corbin as well so it is nine I believe that's nine former world champions now beaten by Mr. Money in the Bank Carmelo Hayes he still has that case you know who knows when he's going to catch that in but for now he is about it about it he gets an 82 83 for AJ and yeah banging match between two world class wrestlers <laughs> then we get the hit row entrance hit row come out they do their thing they're doing a rap for their entrance before riddle of music hits and he comes out with bongos he's bongoing along with the, the tune of hit row and it's gonna be hit hit bro you know swerve ashanti top dollar and riddle against the paragon adam cole bobby wood and the fritz brothers but I just wanted to do a funny RK bro, not RK bro, hit bro entrance. They're all wearing, well, maybe not Swerve actually, he's probably just wearing a jacket, but they are, the rest of them are all wearing them hit bro merch that he got on for Christmas. Hit bro world tour, I was there, all that. One night only, hit bro, a thing. Oh, 87? Really? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I expected to get this, get like an 82. But it is the Paragon and Hit Bro. They're at it. Riddle, you know, he's f firing on all cylinders. He's trying to impress Swerve. He's probably got, like, the shorts with, like, money prints on them. So he matches up with Top Dollar or someone, whatever. He fits in with the crew. And he does all his... The, the Hit Bro, the Riddle best bits. You no, know, Top Dollar does the double power spot on both the Fritz brothers. Swerve does his thing. But in the end, Riddle is an illegal man alongside Adam Cole. And he's fighting. He's trying his hardest to impress Hit Bro, you know, his new best friends. But in the end, a last shot puts Matt Riddle down. And Adam Cole scores the 1 2 3. And the Paragon win here at high voltage. 84 for Riddle, 68 for Shanti, 59 for Top Dollar, 73 for Swerve, 59 for David Fritz, which is, um, Ross? Marshall? David is Ross, okay. Marshall is. Kevin, who gets a 62, 81 for Bobby Roode, and a 90 for Adam Cole. Yeah. Big, I think this is, their, this is their first match as a four. It's a foursome, and they pick up the win. Matt Riddle disappoints his new best friends here tonight. But now, hype video. Bailey, Kyrie, and Asuka. These are women since the formation of Damage Control. Back in probably, what, September? Like when it was just Bailey and Dakota aligned. They're feuded with specifically these two most of that time. 
um, but also everybody everybody else mainly. But it all comes down to this triple threat match. Asuka won the right, then Bailey beat Asuka to get here. So we have two worthy challenges. But who will walk out the champion? In an 86 rated match. Um, yeah, it goes 18 minutes and 30. Asuka, you know, Asuka and Kyrie probably start. The bell will probably ring straight away. And then Asuka and Kyrie just fucking look across at Bailey and just double team her. And she gets taken out. And <laughs> then they, they do some good stuff, you know. We know they can get a banging match. I think they got a 97 at Tokyo. So, yeah, they just do that again. But then shenanigans ensue when Cora and Dakota run out. <laughs> and Asuka, I imagine, goes to mist Bailey in the face. But as she goes to spit the mist, Dakota kicks her in the face. And she, like, spits the green mist everywhere. It gets knocked to the floor. And Dakota and Cora attack her on the outside. And then Kari's obviously on the top rope ready to hit the elbow on Bailey, but that distracts her. Bailey tosses her off to the floor, hits the rose plant, and we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Bailey pins Kyrie to end her reign. And Bailey now holds two championships. We're two years too late for Bailey Dodge straps, but it's finally coming. It's finally here. And funnily enough, two years to the day since EO won the Raw and Women's Tag Team Championships, funnily enough, off of Dakota and Raquel. We now have another double champion in the women's division. Bailey gets a 76, an 87 for Kyrie, and a 94 for Asuka. So, you know, the weakest performer getting the win, but not without shenanigans. We then cut to the ring, RJ City is there and he unveils the Cruiserweight Trios Championships. He goes, over the last few months there's been trios forming on Velocity. We had a mini tournament and these are the two best trios who will become the inaugural trio Cruiserweight Trios Champions and punch their names in history. Will it be the undisputed trio of Roderick Strong, Bobby Fish or Kyle O'Reilly? Or will it be the still unnamed group of Timothy Thatcher, Drew Gulak and Oni Lorcan? It's time to crown the inaugural Cruiserweight tag trio champions. In a, I didn't click next segment. Eighty-seven. Let's fucking go. <laughs> um, yeah, for a cruiserweight match, this actually isn't very high flying because it's got Roderick Strong, it's got Kyle O'Reilly, it's got them three on the other side, and then I guess Bobby Fish is just there. <laughs> you know, where's the lie? And yeah, in sixteen twenty-two, the winners. And the inaugural Cruiserweight Trios champions are Thatcher, Lorcan and Gulak. When Timothy Thatcher pins Bobby Fish with a London Bridge falling down. And they become the inaugural Cruiserweight Trios champions. You know, Timothy Thatcher cut weight just to be in this division. And it's already proving dividends as he already holds gold in the Cruiserweight division. A 60 for Bobby Fish, an 89 for Kyle O'Reilly, a 75 for Roderick Strong... An 84 for Thatcher, an 85 for Gulak, and a 75 for Oni. Yeah. And we have our first champions, our gatekeepers of the division. Are these three here, still the still yet to be named trio of TV Thatcher, Oni Lorcan, and Drew Gulak. But now that's out of the way. It's main event time. Hype video package, how we got here. Almost if it, a year ago to the day at Christmas Chaos when Seth Rollins returned to confront Roman Reigns after he defended against Johnny Gargano. Obviously the feud between these two goes back way longer than that. But just this immediate feud started a year ago at that pay-per-view. They had the match of the Rumble. They went on. He fought Jacob Fatu at WrestleMania. Mind the Bank failure. King of the Ring failure. Then that betrayal at SummerSlam on Cody Rhodes to clash at the castle where Seth Rollins ended Roman's reign to now with war games somewhere in the middle the two men tied together dog collar this is going to be brutal and bloody and who will walk out WWE champion and 89 that's kind of low but I guess the interferences I have booked and just the stipulation on it. I'll take the 89, you know, it's fine. But, yeah, it could have been better. 
it goes for 24 34 we don't we don't actually get dinged for psychology for going that long which is a shock but you know the the usual dog collar spots here roman's gonna wrap the chain around his hand and go for a superman punch or whatever just seth trying to choke roman out with the chain just your usual dog collar stip like spots and then solo sakura will come rushing out and he'd jump Roman, he'd drop Roman with a super kick or whatever. And then Sephiroth can hit a curb stomp on Roman. One, two, kick out. So it's like, come on! Come on, big dog! And then he goes to, he gets him up, he holds Roman there, and then S Solo goes for a Samoan spike. Jacob Fatu runs out, and he tackles Solo to the ground, and him and Solo brawl off. And then probably, like, both fall through the announce table. Or through one of the barricades or something like that to wipe both men out. So we're now back on the even playing field. But in the end, the winner and still WWE champion, Seth Rollins plants Roman with one final curb stomp to end this portion of their rivalry. A 90 for Rollins and 94 for Roman. Match gained heat, apparently on the storyline. And we end the final premium live event of the year. I imagine a scene would be Seth, you know, taking the dog collar off and then spinning it round like he does with the championships when he wins them. <laughs> Covered in blood. You know, Roman bloody and beating on the floor. Solo helping Seth to the back, holding the title. His face bleeding. And <laughs> Bye-bye, big dog. Bye-bye. And that's how he go off the air for the final time on pay-per-view for 2022. For an 89, a very respectable rating, and a very noteworthy show. And that is how SmackDown will wrap up the premium live events for 2022. We do have one more show of the year. Um, we have a Raw and a SmackDown next week. And then it's on to 2023. And for SmackDown now... With this show out of the way, Raw still has New Year's Revolution on the first Sunday of the new year. But for SmackDown, the next time these guys will be on pay-per-view will be at the Royal Rumble. It's that time of year again. Pray for my sanity as I do the editing. And hopefully, you'll follow me on this journey. See you then. <laughs>